from Palo Alto, it's theCUBE. Covering Women Transforming Technology 2017. Brought to you by VMware. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Women Transforming Technology here in sunny Palo Alto at the VMware conference. Uh, I am Rebecca Knight, your host. I'm joined by Josie Gillen. She is the Senior Director of Engineering at Cloudera and a passionate advocate for getting more women into technology. Josie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Pleasure to be here. So I want to start out by, by asking a question that should be obvious, right. but, but it may not be. Why do we need more women in technology? Right. So that's a, yeah, the classic <laughs> question, and I think you know I probably would would have the classic answer, which is just so uh, many studies have shown that diversity re results in much better products, um, much better ideas, and we've found numerous stories where products were developed by mostly white males, and they just have actually. Um, alienated many, many of their customers, right? So, um, so there's definitely that we need to have that diversity. And I think, you know, 50%, 51%, I think actually of the population is women, right? So, um, so let's, not, let's not disregard half of them. Um, I just think women have a lot to offer and a lot to add. Uh, we, you know, it's a, it's a generalization, but women generally are more um, collaborative and, um, and supportive. So, uh, so it's just, it's the right thing to do. And obviously the numbers in tech are just so far skewed off what the actual numbers and population are that it's time to continue to do something about it, but it's hard. I want to talk to you about what you just said about women in their approach to work, their approach to, to being on a team. You said it more collaborative. You were talking a little bit earlier about EQ and the importance right. of EQ. Uh, can you comment on, on, on the perspective that women bring and the, the, the approach that they take to being on a team that, that is different in your experience? You know, I think um, it's just that women are generally probably Again, I'm really generalizing here, but the way that women um, network with each other and support each other and generally want to uh, touch and connect, I think that's a lot of what it is about networking. So, for example, um, you know, again, this is not all women, but in like one-on-ones and meeting with your fellow peers, I think there's all this real connection is really important and building the relationships and probably being a little more vulnerable, you know, I think is really important rather than sort of the stoic, I'm here to get what I need. Uh, I think women generally tend to say, okay, what, what can we get together? And I think that's a natural trait that women have, but again, purely generalizing. In terms of Silicon Valley, you've been, in a, you've been around at a lot right. of different companies, yep. you've built your career here. Is it better, and, and, it, and also particularly now, at a time where we are uh, hearing so many hor horrible stories about um, overt sexism, yep. it, it, everything from subtle biases to overt sexism and sexual harassment, what's it like? Tell us the tales from the trenches. I mean, do you have... Well, f first of all, just I think you were going to start say, is it getting better? Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not, and there's a lot of studies to show that. What I think is changing, though, is that we are, we are talking about it more and more. I mean, starting with, like, I guess it was two years ago and there was this sort of grassroots effort after one of the Grace Hopper conferences to get companies to actually public publicise their diversity data. Mm -hmm. So I think that's number one, right, that we're actually getting companies to uh, say what their numbers are, both for um, gender and and people of colour, right? Um, so the first step is really awareness that there exactly, could be a problem. Exactly, um, and, and then that there's a lot of companies investing in, um, and you know, obviously hiring sort of a diversity and inclusion leader. Uh, I was at Atlassian before I um, came to Cloudera, and Atlassian is a, is a great company, got some really um, good two CEOs who really believe in diversity, but again, like other companies, the numbers were pretty, pretty bad and um, it was in Australia too primary you know that I actually moved to Australia for a year and um, and I think it was very young it was not only um, diver not so diverse on the gender but also very young which is again very common in, in tech companies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they've gone and you know, hired a diversity inclusion leader and she's doing an amazing job at um, bringing in more programs getting awareness out there and trying to make a difference but it's it's not an easy job I mm -hmm. you know I think she's doing amazing I think 
our folks at Cloudera are doing amazing, Salesforce doing amazing, and mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, there's awareness, but it's, it's a very difficult issue. So that's the hiring part of it, is, it, is it's bringing more women in. But then just what about the culture, too? You, we were talking earlier, too, about the supportive environment, yep. a supportive leadership. Yep. Uh, uh, what will it take for, for a big cultural shift in the technology industry? So when I uh, came back, basically, this my story is I'm from New Zealand originally, but I've lived over here. I moved moved to America in '98, and worked for several different companies: Oracle, Salesforce, and um, thought always, hey, I wouldn't mind going back back home and being closer to my family. So we actually moved to Sydney for a year, and that's where I worked for Atlassian, which was a really interesting experience. But it sort of made me realise that the Bay Area was home, and I think the culture of Silicon Valley is something that you can't get outside of Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And I really. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. But again, back to that collaboration. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in Sydney, there's not that many tech companies, right? So uh, so I didn't find that collaboration. These kind of events were very, very rare, and especially in engineering, right? I mean, I could meet people who worked at the Google office in Sydney, but they were more in non-technical roles. So, I mean, there were some. So when I came back, it was really important for me to find a company that, again, as you mentioned, had that high EQ and, it, and a really good culture. And what I mean by that is not, it's got a free lunch. Cloudera has free lunches, but <laughs> that's not what attracted me to Cloudera. What attracted me to Cloudera was talking to um, you know, my, my uh, manager is SVP of engineering and my peers are all VPs of engineering. And it was the conversation in the interviews about that really were conversations and um, and just very, very respectful. And it wasn't all about I'm sort of this is what I do and this is what you must mm -hmm. do. It was about a collaborative conversation. And one thing I really got from talking with both the uh, both my manager and my peers was that they really were out to support each other. And uh, one thing I think is amazing about the culture we have at Cloudera is that uh, what will happen is if I've got a, I'm leading quality performance building infrastructure and quality is at the top of our list at the moment. We need to, you know, we, we can always improve on quality. And we had an extraordinary developer in one of my peers' teams who wanted to come and help the quality problem. Now, normally, what would happen is the development VP might say, I don't want to yes, leave Yes, there are silos right, there. Yes, <laughs> you know what? But he was like, the development VP was, well, you know, um, really sad to lose him, but this is a much bigger problem and I'm going to help him. I'm going to help help him move. And, and I think that is a really interesting leadership style that isn't prevalent throughout Silicon Valley, which is I'm going to do what's good for the company and the overall good of the company and just what's right rather than protecting my department, my own, my unit. My own turf. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and what we want to do at Cloudera is bring that further through the through the um, chains because, uh, you know, as a company, as it's growing, we've got many different product teams and we want to make sure that that collaboration goes across the development managers, the quality engineering managers to really learn from each other and support each other. So, I mean, your question is how do we, you know, I and mean, that to me is very, very important. And I think we need to start talking about it and we need to showcase companies that do it well. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's like the sort of, uh, we've actually gone through one of those uh, sort of personality tests or wasn't actually a personality test at what drives you, whether it's more strategic mm -hmm. or problem solving, people are into a process. And I think that's a real, those are really good things to do so that you can all work to communicate with each other and work with each other. You, you mentioned earlier that one of the, the things about working in Sydney that struck you is that conferences like this one, right. the Women Transforming Technology, yep. are rare. Yep. Um, why are they so important, do you think? Oh, right. I've been to Grace Hopper Conference four times, <laughs> um, and it's you're so used to being the minority. You're so used to being the minority, and it's fantastic to come to a conference like that where you're, this, where you're not the minority anymore. And I think one thing that extraordinary... Have you been to the Grace Hopper Conference? I have. I was, uh, I was, there, I was there in Houston in one, October. One thing that I find extraordinary about the Grace Hopper is the is the um, camaraderie. And you'll be lining up to get a coffee and just the people that will, you'll start a conversation. And I've actually made some really, really great friends from Grace Hopper that I still keep in contact with. And it's the networking and the whole, Hang on a minute. She's having the same problem I'm having, which you're and these not. Are, are in. these professional problems that you're facing, or are these um, these a bit strategic? A bit of both. It's technical. Like it, could, it could be okay. technical problems. Okay. It could be a lot of it's how do I get a team to collaborate on something? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. how do I overcome my imposter syndrome? How do I, uh, you know, be a good leader? Uh, and the co the connections you make, and there's just you're not. It's really feel that you can truly be yourself. And I love what Carol was just saying before about being authentic and being genuine. Um, I think something like Grace Hopper is somewhere where you can truly, truly feel authentic and genuine. And uh, the thing for me 
is it always gives me a great big confidence. I just feel great after these these uh, conferences, and I'm inspired to to just go back and and really continue to you know to to, to move the needle. If you could, uh, so here this is a women's conference. It's mostly women attending. Um, if you if you could send a message to the men of Silicon Valley, what would it be? I mean, if you could just gather all of them in a room and, and, and say, give them some advice about either helping a young woman in her career or just, right. hey, fellas, know this. Yeah, I think, it's, I think the big advice is listen, right? And, uh, you know, we, we, we were at the Grace Hopper Conference two years ago. No, I wasn't. It was an, that one. <laughs> where I'm not sure if you heard about the Male Allies panel, but it was kind of interesting because basically there was a Male Allies panel, which was done with all good intention, mm -hmm. but it got a lot of flack because why the hell are males taking up our space? And what the people who were on the panel did, which was really interesting, is they actually created a second panel the next day and said, okay, we're going to shut up we're going to listen. And it's really quite hard. I mean, for all of us in technology, we're all sort of used to solving problems and mm -hmm. we want to have our say. And to get them to be quiet and listen is so important and not try and solve the problem, just try and understand. And Kara was just saying that before, right, about some of the stuff that's going on with Uber and everything is some of the males she talks to say, but I don't see it. Well, of course you don't see it because you're not experiencing it, right? So listen, talk to women and make it very clear that it's a, a safe space and that you're just here to listen and you're not going to try and solve the problem. But try and get an understanding because they're in a very, very different uh, space than we are. It, the 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 story that's going on with Uber it is depressing mm -hmm. as as a woman mm -hmm. um, as as a woman in technology right. uh, in Silicon Valley particularly just a couple of years after the Ellen Powell lawsuit right. are you hopeful that things will get better <laughs> oh, I, I'm hopeful things will get better um, I mean it's brave women like Susan who are telling their stories I, you know we we need to support each other and, and, and really support people like Susan who are brave enough to say that. And obviously now, because she's done it, a lot of other people are coming forward and, you know, Uber has to take some responsibility and has to do something. So um, I'm hopeful it's getting better because we're talking about a lot more, but it's a very, very difficult situation. And um, the more we talk about it, and there's people a lot smarter than me and a lot different, you know, who are very... Um, experienced in this kind of social issues and that to be able to figure out how the hell we address this. But a lot of it is, is to get the conversation going and, as I say, to listen. If you could give a piece of advice to the younger version of you, that right. young girl in New Zealand yes. <laughs> dreaming of yes. a career in technology. Yes. You mentioned imposter syndrome. Right. What, w what would you say to... to well, again, back to Kara's uh, talk, she talked about... Um, don't worry so much about what people think of you. Oh, that's you know, so hard, though. Know, it's she, so hard. And I remember, gosh, in my early days of my career, I was like sitting in a oh, I can't say anything. I'm not, I, I, I really want to say something, but I'm going to look stupid. And it's like, be curious. I mean, I think that's my best advice. What I love when I'm interviewing, I've done a lot of interviewing of college grads. And what I'll do is, is see what questions they ask. So I think you don't have to have all the answers and you don't have to show I'm the best, you know, Java programmer there is. But, oh, tell me about this. And I really love that your company does this. And how do you approach this kind of problem? And just that thirst for knowledge and that curiosity um, and that eagerness to learn, I think it's really important to, um, to ask questions. And I think that's a good way to get over sort of the imposter syndrome because you're not necessarily uh, coming up as like, I'm trying to be an expert on something. So I'm trying to contribute to the conversation and, and help me understand. And I think it's a really good way to get people out there and, and getting people talking. So be curious. Don't care so much what people right, think of you. Right. Uh, you don't have to be the smartest person at, at and, the and table. Build, and build your network. And especially like if you see somebody in a meeting that handled a particular situation very well, I think it's really great to be able to go up to them afterwards and say, look, I loved how you said that. Can you maybe chat to me about how you came up with that because mm -hmm. I'd love to learn from you. You know, there's a lot of this um, talk about mentorship and I, you know, I think it's really true that Sheryl Sandberg sort of says it's, it's not really the best way to say, could you be my mentor please? Right. Um, but to actually just say, hey, I Ask love Ask for advice. This. Ask exactly. for advice. And, you know, very few women would, I, I, would say, like, I don't want to talk about that. Most women are like, well, that's great and want to be able to help out the younger generation. Josie Gillen, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for theCUBE and our coverage of Women Transforming Technology. We'll be right back. Thank you.